What's going on YouTube? West Hobbies RC. So today we are back with the Blade MCPX BL2 with a Micro Heli 3 Blade Conversion Kit build. So in this video we are going to finish the build up. We are going to do the tail section, level the swash plate, get the head put on, and it will be done. It was a very quick build. This is a quick series. Two parts. I'm going to do my best to finish it up in this video. So where are we at now? Now we're going to start the tail section. So as you see, I already pulled the motor off the stock tail boom and tail mount, motor mount. We have the new Microheli aluminum motor mount. We have the Microheli carbon tail skid and the tail boom, of course, Microheli that came in the kit. So I've had a couple people ask me, one person in particular, about doing the tail motor wires. So... As you can tell, the motor wires are run through the boom. Now, this isn't a regular wire. This is an actual copper wire. And these wires can be very tricky to uh, solder, cut. There's a trick to them about sanding them, and they still don't stick that great. But you can solder these wires. So, I have not done this yet. The first time for me doing this boom. So, what I think I'm going to do is I already cut. So, just so you guys know, these connectors are glued into here. It is a pain in the butt to get it apart, but I got it apart. So I'm going to finish cutting the glue loose that these are glued to. And I think what I'm going to do is just unsolder from this actual pin here and pull the wires out, stick them through the new boom, through the new tail motor clamp and re-solder back together. So I'm going to get this apart here and then get the camera set up and we'll be back on how to unsolder and solder the tail motor wires. All right, so you can see what I have done here. I ended up having to destroy the old boom and motor mount to get the wires out because they were glued in. I broke the boom here and I glued it back together. The CA seat then and glued the wires to the boom from the factory. They glued the connector and all that glue seat then. So, I just broke the boom apart to get it out because we have a new boom here and new aluminum mount, so I'm not worried about it. But you can see here where they soldered to the connector. You'll notice that these copper wires have a coating on them, okay? That green, that brown, that red is a coating. Here is the actual wire. And when you solder, if you notice that hard to do this if you notice that that copper is showing so when you go to solder these wires you want to sand and remove that coating to solder to the connector so i'm going to finish getting the heat shrink off of these two and then i will put the camera on a tripod and show you guys how far back to go and then what to solder to reheat shrink it but of course we're going to Un, you know, desolder the connector and then run the wires through the new boom and then resolder the connector on once we get the wires through the mount. All right, so we got the boom out, we got the wire, the end desoldered on the plug, and then I just twisted together. So now I ended up breaking two of the wires, so I cut them a little shorter, but it's okay because we have coiled up here lots of extra wire. So if we need it, we have it. But now we are going to take our boom. Now the boom doesn't matter, there's two flat spots. There is a flat spot on this end and on this end, and it does not matter which way is which. So we're just going to take our wires and gently push them through the boom. This can be a little tricky. It might be a little tight, especially if you have a little bit of excess carbon stuck on there from the old boom. We are almost there. Oop. We gotta be careful. We should be almost coming out. Yep, and we are right there. We'll take our little pliers. We are so close to it coming all the way out. Let's just straighten this end right here. And let's try to get it to finish going. And there we are. We have it coming out the end here. There we go. And then we can take our needle nose, gently push and pull the wires out. So now we have our end to go to the FBL. 
and then we have the end for the motor. So our wires are completely through the boom now. So now we will slide our tail motor mount into place. We will take this and slide it into place. It is going to be flat side down. So if you look, flat side is going to go down towards that Phillips screw and there we go. So now our wires are coming out the boom, of course. It's really long, but we will pull it back through. So now I recommend taking the screw out, lock tightening it up, tighten your boom down, and then you have your wires run and your boom on. And then we will sand the ends of these and solder, heat shrink solder, and we will be ready to install the motor. So let me get the ends, or let me get the soldering gun ready and be, be right back. All right, so I went ahead and sanded the edges of the wire, the ends, put some heat shrink that's really big, so I hope it shrinks down small enough, but I already tend the wire. So when you're soldering this on the connector, your wires are gonna be red, brown, green. That, oops, sorry, that is going to be the color code of your wires. So now you're going to want to just, I already tend everything. You're just gonna wanna touch the wire Try to do this while videoing, which is very difficult. Touch the wire. And that is it. Just like that, it's soldered. I'll take a crimp or a little cutter, trim it up, heat shrink it. Our connector's done. It's that easy to do the wires. You've got to be careful. It's small stuff, so these wires are very easy to break easy to break the connector but we are soldered back up i will cut the ends of it clean it up heat shrink it and pull it back through the boom and then we can move on to mounting the motor all heat shrunk up so now we are ready to install the motor so of course you can see there is a big hole there that is for the plug of the motor to go through so you're just going to feed the motor through like this super easy super simple and there's only one way for it to go so we have our screw already. We have Loctite on the screws already. So we are ready to just assemble. I'm trying to make the video process quicker for you guys so it's not just a bunch of me screwing in a lot of little screws. So we have to align the motor to where we have the screw holes, which I don't know if that's right or not. Yep, that's right, okay. So once you get one started, the other ones are pretty simple. Now these are the stock motor mount screws and I did not get it in the hole, but you see what I'm doing. Just screw the motor in, finagle it into place. Once you get the motor lined up where it should go, like so, and then you do all your other screws. So I'm gonna do that off camera because I'm having a hard time and I don't wanna bore you guys. Okay, so we got all three screws in, locked tight, we're good to go. So now I went ahead, if you can see this, and I used a silver Sharpie to mark which way the connectors went. And I also did, you can see it on this side here, and I also took a picture to make sure I had red, brown, green. But now you guys will know in the video, red, brown, green. So now we will take our tail motor wires and route them this way and then try to do this while I video this at the same time. This is going to reach down through here and then we are going to take our plug. See this is kind of difficult but then we are going to carefully bend our wires and then we are going to push our plug into place. I might have to straighten some of the pins out just like that. Okay, and then we can pull a little bit of slack that we have. And I'm just gonna leave it like that because I don't want too much pressure on the joint. So now our tail section is done. So I can actually push this down a little bit more but that puts a lot of stress on the wires. So I don't want to, I'm gonna leave it the way it is. So simple, tail is completely done. Now we just grab our tail skid, 
my tail fin and we are going to push it into place like that and then now we are ready to insert onto the mainframe so now we are going to take our wires and they get pushed over like this and then we take our helicopter frame and again flat spot down and then we are just going to insert them like this it stops it locks into place again I recommend taking your screw out here and lock tighting this screw so we're going to go ahead and lock tight this if we can ever get it out but you know what I mean we're gonna lock tight this screw and then go ahead and run the wires All forward right, so I went ahead and I uncoiled it because remember I had to cut off about a half inch back here to resolder because I broke one and it may be short so I cut them all to match so uncoiled so what we're gonna do is we're just going to pull it do one coil and see what we're looking like we probably do another coil see what we're looking like and let's see if we can get away with one more coil and I think we can so let's go to the inside of this servo push rod let's just remove this push rod or drop it down for a second so now we are going to go one more coil which we did and insert back into here like this carefully of course and then once we are done we will use our favorite paint or favorite fabric paint There we go. So now our tail motor wires are hooked up. Let's go ahead and reconnect our push rod. There we go. Let's push these wires out of the way a little bit. Slide these wires down. And now our tail is on. Our motors are mounted. Oh, sorry guys. All of our screws are done. So all that's left now is let's get the radio and level the swash plate. And then we will put the head on. So we went ahead, we leveled the swash plate, everything is working like it should. So now, let's get the head mounted. So you're gonna have, I checked everything for Loctite, of course, always check for Loctite. So now you're gonna have your arms. And I already pulled the screws out and it is very simple. So your arms are going to go on to the head this way. Stop moving around it. So your head, your arms are gonna go on the head and they are going to not face down like this. You're gonna want them to look like this. You want them to face down towards the swash plate. So now we will take our screwdriver, our double zero Phillips and our tiny little screws. Oh, these things are so small. So now we want to start the screw and then run it all the way in. Remember, there's no Loctite on these because they are plastic and you don't wanna to go too tight to where you pinch them. You want them to still move flawlessly, perfectly, still be smooth and bind free. So now we'll grab our next screw and you do it all the way around the same way. So you want them to face down Raise side up like this. Run that screw into there. Remember, no Loctite. This is plastic. Loctite eats plastic. I have just finished a 470 for David, and it was an LP. We converted it to an LM, and whoever built that thing use plastic for everything. So now you got to be careful. You don't want, you got to watch when you're screwing the head down see how it started to walk out so we want it to push in and then there's a little brass insert inside the blade grip that this screw goes through and you'll see it catch just like that so run this down again we want to tighten it up but we don't want to kill it we still want it to be free so of course you do that on all of them I'm gonna get the other one done and then we will mount the head all right, so we got all three of the arms done. Look at that machinery masterpiece. It is just so nice. Micro Heli did such a great job with this kit. 
just like all their kits. Now remember, you want these arms to be free, smooth, your blade grips be free and smooth, and no binding. So now, let's grab our helicopter. We already pulled the screw out. We are going to slide down the head block, and we want, I don't know if you guys can see this, we need it to line up. We can move this stuff out of the way. So we're going to slide our screw through after we Loctite it. I almost forgot that very important step. Tiny bit of Loctite. Slide our screw through. And of course it moved. So now we have to realign. But we're gonna slide our screw through. We are going to tighten the head down, hook up the swash plate, and we will be good to go. So now we are lined up. And of course it wants to move. There we go, tighten it down. I'll tell you what, working on small helicopters is a challenge. A little snug. And then go ahead and connect your swash plate. Which is very tight. But go ahead, connect your swash plate, and then you are done with the head assembly. Swash plate is hooked up, nice and tight, and very slop free. I mean, there ain't no slop exception of what's in the actual linear servo. But in the head and swash plate, there is zero slop. Very, very nice. So our head is on. We are good to go. Tail blade is on. Now remember the correct direction of putting your tail blade on. Do not put it on backwards. So now we are going to throw the main blades on, which I'm not going to video because it's simple. You just throw them on. And they are shorter than stock, by the way and we will get a final weight of this thing. We are completed. So the MCPX BL2 is done. Three bladed, of course, all red, carbon and aluminum mainframe, carbon skids, all aluminum head and swash plate, aluminum tail, it looks incredible. And of course, just like the Micro Heli 230, the kit went together flawlessly. No need for modifications, nothing. It went together like it should. Everything fit like it should. So I'm happy. I recommend the kit. Now the biggest thing, what is the finished weight? So I'm going to make a prediction just by feel. I have a feeling it's going to be around... 60 grams the so stock was 54.59 or 58 so i'm gonna say 60 grams but also we have the fiberglass canopy and it does feel significantly heavier heavier than the stock canopy so we have our scale let's go ahead and turn it on zero it out make sure it is good and in grams so three bladed head set it on here and let's see what it weighs 64.39 grams so we are just over nine grams heavier but i want to know something i want to know what it weighs with the stock canopy and then we're going to weigh the canopy got the stock canopy back on it looks good with the stock canopy too actually i like the feather out looks good either way it actually looks really good stock canopy. anyways let's see let's throw it back on the scale here and we are at 60.25 grams. So the whole kit added roughly six grams of added weight, which is not bad at all for a complete aluminum and carbon fiber build. Every going from a complete plastic helicopter to a complete aluminum and carbon fiber helicopter, I'll take it. Adding a third blade, I'll take it. So let's weigh the fiberglass canopy it is thick it does feel a little heavy but it, again it is fiberglass so it is 9.3 grams itself and now let's weigh the plastic, plastic canopy on 5.17 grams so there is a four gram weight difference between the two canopies 9.30 grams and 5.18 grams. So there's about a four gram weight difference, but you're looking at a plastic canopy versus a fiberglass. So of course, it's going to weigh more, but 
all in all, I am super happy. So there you guys go that are going to want to know the weights. We know the I'm weight going now. to take some of my famous fabric paint that I use for all FBL and servo connections. And I'm going to go through and right here, I'm going to put a bead of glue on and the same for the tail motor connection as well as the back of the servo plug. I will put a dab on there just to help stop any vibrations or anything from the motors unplugging themselves. But it is done. I am super happy with it. I highly recommend the kit. So if you guys are looking for a nice upgrade to make your BL2 to the next level, take it to the next net level, make it look good, I highly, highly recommend the Micro Heli kit. They make a three blade, a two blade. I don't think they make a four blade, but you could look. But this kit itself will be linked in the description below. Look, the best part, we have auto rotation. Even though you can't auto a little helicopter, it's still cool. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this video has answered some of your guys' questions. I hope it has helped some of you guys who might be building this kit or are planning on building this kit. So if you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, take care. Have a great day. And Micro Heli, thank you so much for sending this kit. Check them out in the description below.